Hi, this is the gigantic curvy 3D character modeling tutorial. We're now on to uh, the, the second big part, the sculpting part. And this is the first video in the sculpting series. You can see what we're going to do. The brown object on the, the left is what we're going to attempt. And the gray object is what we've got out of the, the drawing videos of the series. Um, so we're going to focus on the torso in this video. I'm selecting all the parts of the torso, the pelvis, the trunk, the chest, and the, the muscles around the neck. They're all made out of curves at the moment, but we want to turn them into a mesh for sculpting. So to do that, I'm going to first isolate the parts I want to sculpt on first. So I'm going to rem remove the head from the neck and remove the arms and legs. And because we grouped them earlier, they're easy to, uh, to hide and remove. Now we've got a single group off the pelvis which has all the parts which are going to make up the torso. Now I'm going to use voxel merge to merge these parts, which turns them all into a, a solid, a solid object and removes all the intersecting parts. Uh, it looks a bit rough at the moment, so I'm going to smooth and relax the surface a bit. You can see that evens out the triangles in the mesh. Now we can start sculpting. I'm going to turn on mirror sculpt on the left, just so we can see the effect of our strokes on both sides of the mesh. Um, I'll show you how not to do it first. I'm going to use the sub tool and try and draw out the, the chest. So I set a fairly low intensity and no pinch to start off with. And this draws a sort of dull, thick line on the model. Holding control to change the size and dragging again. Very sort of soft, dull indent. Now this time I'm going to do the same, but including pinch. So I've dragged up the pinch slider to a middle sort of value. And already we've got a more defined defined shape and look here. Note this works best if you have a subdivision mesh. Um, you can always press J to turn your mesh into a subdivision mesh, which means it automatically subdivides as you sculpt. Um, I'm going to show the, the shoulders just for context. I'm not going to sculpt on them at the moment. We're going to weld them onto the model later. It always helps to sort of model on smaller parts, I find. Um, it makes it much easier to pose as well. So we're back using the, the sub brush with a, a fair amount of pinching. When we go over a line a second time, it makes it deeper, but it also pinches and makes the line sharper and tighter. So by re redrawing a particular pit, you can change the level of tightness in the uh, in the line. So there, I'm redrawing to make the top part of that curve tighter. So usually, when I do this, I'd have um, pure ref open in the corner with lots of photos of athletes and bodybuilders and people I'd want to uh, get inspiration for the physique from, or anatomy books. And it's almost as simple as tracing out the shapes from your references. Um, so now I'm going to use a very small brush, again with sub, again with pinch, and start carving in those little muscles at the, the side of the chest. 
sort of zigzags sort of flat as they approach the, the front of the torso and a bit more rounded on the sections which wrap around the side of the torso. Now I'm just using the plain old pinch brush. I've turned on fold pinch which changes the the look of the pinch sections to uh, more like the top of a mountain than a sort of cusp of two pieces pressing together. Again, just using the pinch brush to tighten up some sections. Now here we've been working on the fairly large shapes of the design. Um, for a more sort of natural and rough look, we'll go over these parts with a smaller brush and add some variation and roughness to the, the shapes of the curves. Now I'm going to use the um, the inflate brush, which will basically make some of those muscles pop a bit. Just showing you can use the add brush as well. So up to now I've just been using the sub brush, but the add brush will obviously pull in the opposite direction, and <clears throat> adding volume to the mesh. You can also use this with pinch to make sort of um, creases push out of your mesh. Now I'm going to use the the redraw tools, which let you fade in a stroke, fade out a stroke. At the bottom of the, the bar on the left, there's those two triangles for fade in and fade out. And they take the, your last stroke and redraw it with a fade, or redraw it with uh, different brush settings. But here I'm just using um, I the I key to redraw, and each time I redraw, it's fading out at the end of the stroke. So when I paint the stroke, it's a solid long line, but when I draw, redraw it, it turns it into a long sort of V shape, which fades out at the end. So adding some small roughness. You could go to town with the, the small strokes and the rough strokes if you want to make a particularly monstrous or particularly ripped sort of torso. Just painting on final little details. I find you can spend as, as long as you want. Uh, you can either do very quick sculpt in a couple of minutes or you could work in all the details in a much longer amount of time. But um, quite often I find once I've got the original base mesh sculpted, then uh, modelled with sketch curves, then the actual sculpting is relatively straightforward because I don't have to worry about the sort of shapes or proportions too much. I'm just using the soft move move tool to tweak a few of the details, the features around the body, and uh, we're done with the torso. Come back next time for sculpting the head.